The objectives of our video are to review the diagnosis and management of Bartholin gland cysts and abscesses. We will also demonstrate two low fidelity, easily accessible simulation techniques. The first for placement of a word catheter and the second a novel surgical technique for marsupialization of a Bartholin gland. Bartholin glands are located at the posterior introitus bilaterally and drain through ducts that empty into the vestibule near the 4 o'clock and 8 o'clock positions. These glands begin to function at puberty, providing moisture for the vestibule. These normally pea-sized glands are only palpable if the duct becomes cystic or a gland abscess develops. Bartholin's duct cysts and abscesses are common problems in women of reproductive age, with up to 2% of women developing a Bartholin's duct, cyst, or gland abscess in their lifetime. Bartholin gland cysts occur when an obstruction of the distal Bartholin's duct results in the retention of secretions, with resultant dilation of the duct and formation of a cyst. These are often asymptomatic or may present as a mass which can cause discomfort to the patient. The cyst may become infected and an abscess may develop in the gland. Bartholin's gland abscesses are polymicrobial and while Neisseria gonorrhea and Chlamydia trachomatis are common pathogens, it is important to note that Bartholin's duct cysts and gland abscesses are no longer considered to be exclusively the result of sexually transmitted infections. Treatment is indicated in the setting of a symptomatic cyst or if the cyst has evolved into an abscess since unless spontaneous rupture has occurred, an abscess rarely resolves on its own. Incision and drainage is a relatively quick and easy procedure that provides almost immediate relief to the patient. This is discouraged, however, because there is a high likelihood that the cyst will recur with a failure rate for IND of about 13%. The preferred method is incision and word catheter placement. A word catheter is commonly used to treat Bartholin's duct cysts and gland abscesses. The stem of this rubber catheter is one inch long and the diameter of a number 10 French Foley catheter. The small inflatable balloon tip of the word catheter can hold about three milliliters of saline. To recreate this simulation, you will need the following all of which are commonly found in labor and delivery. One, a latex glove. Two, a packet of lubricant. And also a ward catheter kit, which includes one ward catheter, a scalpel, and typically a set of hemostats or Kelly clamps. A clipboard is optional but it can help stabilize the simulation if you're doing this alone. To make the simulated Bartholin cyst, you will need a glove and a lubricating jelly packet. Fold the edges of the jelly packet, then place it in the glove like so. Slide the packet to the tip of one of the fingers. Last, twist the remainder of the finger and glove to hold it securely in place. After sterile preparation and the administration of a local anesthetic, the wall of the cyst or abscess is grasped with a small forceps, and a number 11 blade is used to make a five millimeter incision into the cyst or abscess. The incision should be within the introitus external to the hymenal ring in the area of the duct orifice. The incision will rarely be too small. Remember, it only has to fit a tube just over three millimeters in size, but if the incision is too large, the word catheter will fall out. After the incision is made, the word catheter is inserted.
and the balloon tip is inflated with two to three milliliters of saline solution injected through the hub of the catheter. The inflated balloon allows the catheter to remain within the cavity of the cyst or abscess. The free end of the catheter can be placed in the vagina. If a Bartholin cyst or abscess is too deep, word catheter placement is impractical and other options must be considered. Marsupialization is another option. Traditionally, this procedure has been described using incision and then individual interrupted sutures. However, today, we will present a novel technique. Equipment for this portion of the procedure will be the same as for the previous, with the exception of also needing sutures, most easily found as a set of pop-offs, though two swedged-on sutures packs can be used as well. With the cyst still intact, the cyst wall is grasped and a suture is delivered through and through. This is repeated three to four more times, depending on the size of the gland. An incision is then made over the gland in the usual fashion outside the hymenal ring and approximately two to three centimeters long, taking care not to cut the previously placed sutures. The cavity drains spontaneously. The cavity also may be irrigated with saline solution and if necessary, loculations can be broken up with a hemostat. At this point, the previous sutures are visible running through the cyst. These are elevated with a Kelly clamp so that there is additional slack in the middle of each stitch. This middle is then in size. The result, as you can see here, is a series of individual interrupted sutures, which have, by definition, gone through both skin and into the cyst wall. These are then individually tied down and marsupialization is complete. Although recurrence is unlikely, if attempts at marsupialization fail, surgical excision may be necessary. Excision is not an office-based procedure due to the discomfort and risk of excessive bleeding. In any of the circumstances above, if cellulitis is present, empiric broad-spectrum antibiotic therapy should be started. Cultures may be obtained, but the results rarely change management. The risk of malignancy is extremely rare, on the order of one in a million in even the highest risk groups. Biopsy should be considered if there is concern for malignancy, or in some practices, empirically in patients above age 40. This concludes our presentation on the diagnosis and treatment of Bartholin cysts and abscess. Thank you for your attention. We hope you learned something new.